Hey everyone, it's Kong again with another episode of Should You Summon. As always, I'm going to be presenting high-level overviews to help you decide whether this banner is worth your hard-earned vouchers and crystals. This month, the main event is a new one-unit limited banner featuring Waytham's perfected form, Apotheosis. We're also getting reruns of the previous limited banners featuring the Awakened One and Normal Waytham. Kind of like a normal raid-up banner, you have a 40% chance to get the featured unit. But, unlike a normal raid-up banner, there's not a second character, so the other 60% is all for off-banners. You know what that means. To sweeten the deal though, anytime you do pop one of those 60% off banners, you get some Apotheosis shards as a consolation prize. If your off banner is someone you have at 6 stars already, you get 15 consolation shards, and if not you get 10 consolation shards. So it's perfectly possible to get Apotheosis entirely from summoning other off banner units. Not ideal, but possible. Apotheosis is a flying bruiser who ignores class disadvantage and has a couple of gimmicky talent debuffs to mess with your enemies. Most of these revolve around changing their class type to demon. Any enemy that he actively damages will either get a talent debuff that changes their class type to demon, or a debuff that makes them unable to be controlled. This second debuff is obviously a PvP specific debuff, which causes the AI to just do a normal auto attack, but in PvE it's replaced with minus 30% damage dealt effect instead. His unique one cost skill is a 3 range aura that has a 30% chance of turning nearby enemies into demons, but he also has accelerated aid for a 1c option if you don't think you're going to need that aura. His unique 2 cost skill is a self-centered 0.4 times damage AoE that does extra damage to demon and holy units and reduces their defense. His 3 cost skill is a transformation, an act again, a revive, and an attack. When he transforms, he gets plus 20% damage dealt, 20% damage reduction, his 2c AoE gets upgraded to do the lose control debuff on every enemy demon, he also gets plus 15% attack versus holy and demon heroes, and his 1c aura's chance to turn enemies into demons goes up from 30% to 60%. The attack itself is a 1.6x damage single target melee that turns 3 enemy buffs into debuffs before battle, and also inflicts Curse of Wounding. He's a member of Dark Reincarnation buffed by Bozal and Licorice, Mythical Realm buffed by Gizaroth, Sage of the Trees and Isolde, and Yales Legends buffed by Landius and Sigma. For bonds, he doesn't unlock anyone else's bonds, and he just needs McLean for his own attack bond. For his defensive bond, you simply need to upgrade him to one of his final classes. For content, in PvE he's on faction for Leviar and Phoenix in the Eternal Temple, and Fenrir and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning. His primary PvE use is going to be as a generic bruiser who flies around and hits things hard, but he doesn't have unique enough mechanics to be able to carry hard PvE on his own. At best he'll be able to turn enemies into demons so your holy units can burst damage, but most hard bosses will probably be immune to this. In PvP, his mindless bruiser nature becomes a bit more of an asset. When his kit was first released six months ago, the prevailing sentiment was that he was nothing too special, and based on the information and the meta at the time, the one we're in right now in Global, that wasn't exactly wrong. But what we didn't know at the time was that a string of monstrous heroes would get released to accompany him, and the meta turned into a rumble with the likes of Andriao, Nymea, Eshin, and Apotheosis trading revives and slugging it out. By the time playoffs hit, Apotheosis appeared in every high rank box. He isn't going to single handedly carry your team like some previous meta heroes, so getting him isn't a make or break for your box, you know, he's not a obvious first pick hero in every game, but he does fit in well with the upcoming tsunami of important new units, and when you're able to pick him he'll definitely be able to contribute. For his build, you can kit him out in a couple of ways. My preferred build is Flyer with Breeze, and the usual flying guy stuff, so Ragnarok, Last Rites, and then Helm and Accessory of Choice. He can also be run as a demon, which lets you try to abuse his AoEs with Balance Blade and Clock, 
throw some Divine Boots on for good measure. Full Moon could be an option for either of these builds as well, if you're on a budget and you already have the gear enchanted. Otherwise, save your FM scrolls for SP Bernhardt. Alright, I think it's time we move along to the notes for noobs. So overall, Apotheosis is a strong PvP unit, but he won't bring anything particularly interesting or unique to PvE. If you don't Apex, then you don't really need him. In fact, if you really are a noob, and you don't already have the Awakened One, then you should summon for her instead. She's a great, versatile unit in PvE and PvP, with a lot of interesting mechanics that can help you progress through story and time rifts. There's a link to her episode of Should You Summon in the description below, so check that out after this video wraps up, but don't go anywhere quite yet, because I still have important information about upcoming banners. Since this is a special event month, we're going to be inundated with potentially interesting things to spend our hard-earned vouchers and crystals on, including the other limited banners featuring Waytham and Awakened One. Fortunately, the other new character for this update is Captain Mac, and he's totally free from event shards all the way up to 6 star. The main thing to look out for next week is the lotto for Bernhardt's SP upgrade stone, so you should budget 4,000 crystals for that if you want to use him. He'll become an important meta unit for PvP for a while. The normal banner for that week will be a raid up featuring Hilda and Lugner, and we'll also get our usual Langrisser 1, 2, and 3 wishlist. The third week of the update will bring a Destiny banner featuring Lightbringer, Ricky, and Caroline, the usual Langrisser 4 and 5 wishlist, as well as the full-on, full-power wishlist banner that will let us select anyone up to and including Amadeus and Sagany. There's also a gear wishlist banner in there. The final week is the wrap-up, at least as far as summoning goes. We'll get a Destiny banner featuring Shelfaniel, Sage of the Trees, and Wheeler, and the Ancient Destiny banner featuring Elwyn, Leon, and Bernhardt. It's an oldie but a goodie, all three of those units are still relevant. With such a packed month, it's tough to start thinking ahead to the next update. So, as much summoning as you do this month, try to keep some in the tank if possible. Next month's update brings two powerful PvP characters in Andrio and Nymea. The month after that brings us the overall PvE and PvP powerhouse Ashin. And the month after that is the Mythical Realm faction buffing Dragon Wife Isolde. Not to mention the Giver collab coming up in six months. I've been joking about getting a Giver collab since 2019, and now it's actually happening. I literally can't believe it. Okay folks, that's it for this episode. Thank you for your patience. As much as I would love to try to summon two copies of Apotheosis just to get a head start on him, this tsunami of upcoming characters means I'll have to be conservative for the next few months, so I'll hope to get one and then I'll eject. Let me know in the comments below, or on this old Neon's Discord what your plans are for this banner or this month, or the future few months, and let me know what kind of luck you ended up having once the summoning starts. Thank you so much for watching, I wish you all the best of luck, and I will catch you in the next Should You Summon. Extra special thanks of course to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. Shout out to Levitt, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Jerome Meyer, and Harambe. Thanks everyone, and don't forget to check out that Awakened One video as well.